Nonprofit tech-focused company P33 is looking to expand the city's tech boom even further with an emphasis on diversity and inclusion. Joining us now is P33 co-founder and chair and former U.S. Secretary of Commerce, Penny Pritzker. Good to see you here this morning. So talk to us about this initiative and what some of your goals are. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, this initiative it, it was created because we're really bullish on the future of Chicago's tech leadership. Um, we've had tremendous uh, momentum in the last number of years. And so this week we've created Tech Chicago Week to celebrate the growth and vibrancy of our tech community. Uh, as you can see, we've had 12 unicorns uh, over the last 12 months, uh, 2,000 startups, uh, and um, you know, we think the strength in our technology lies not only in our enterprise companies, uh, like a Walgreens or an Allstate or United, but also in our startups like Ocean, Reapley, or Tegas. Uh, uh, and that kind of momentum that we're experiencing is not just in one part of the economy. Uh, our tech sector is addressing issues in food and ag, in transportation, in logistics, in life sciences. And so we're, we want to um, make sure that everyone's aware of all that is happening here in, uh, in the greater Chicago and Illinois uh, tech sector. Another thing that we're really focused on is um, we've been doubling down in areas where we have an authentic right to win like quantum computing, artificial intelligence and electric vehicles where we won a number of both grants and new companies uh, in the last uh, several years. So it's an exciting week for Chicago to celebrate uh, what's going on here in technology. Certainly. I mean, it is at a time where technology companies that are relocating are looking at Miami for warm weather and free taxes, perhaps, and then additionally also looking at Texas for good barbecue and for whatever other reasons as well. And so all of that considered, what's the Chicago pitch that you've been able to discuss with these companies? Well, I think the Chicago pitch is, first of all, we have a very diverse uh, tech talent pipeline. We have enormous support that we've set up for our um, uh, founders. And, um, you know, we've got, uh, we're committed to solving big societal problems. You know, for example, we've got companies that are feeding the world sustainably, like Nature's Find, or curing cancer and extending life for the critically sick, like Tempest and Cancer IQ, or connecting the world uh, to move products uh, more efficiently around the world, you know, in a company like Project 44. So I think the big pitch is the ecosystem is massively vibrant, addressing really critical issues, and uh, there's enormous support available for you uh, to build your business here. And we've got, you know, loads of success stories, uh, and we're doing it all with a population that's extremely diverse. Um, you know, Chicago, our great asset is our diverse population. And one of the things we're doing at P33 is really investing in making sure that our tech talent pipeline is equally as diverse as our underlying population. Um, because every one of us knows that if you can have diversity of background and culture and experience at the table, um, that you will make better decisions. So you put all of that together and it's hard not to be excited about what's happening in Chicago's tech uh, system. I'm curious, it's Julie here, um, just more broadly about the tech funding environment right now. Obviously, we've seen enormous pullback in public markets. We have started to see that filter through to private markets as well. Um, and so how is that affecting both the companies that you've already funded and the potential candidates out there? Has it shrunk the pool at all? You know, you know the overall um, uh, funding situation is more complicated for tech companies all over the country. But for strong businesses that have a reason to exist, um, it's not been a challenge raising new capital. We're in the venture capital business, and we've had probably a third of our portfolio raise money since the tech meltdown. Uh, and uh, that, and what that says is that there's money for strong companies that have a reason to exist. How would you grade the progress so far amongst you know, the tech companies, whether it's startup or, or big tech, in, in improving diversity and inclusion inside their companies? 
Well, I think it's a real challenge for every company. And in the technology field, it's been a very significant challenge. It's one of the reasons P33 made, you know, P33, which is our, our uh, Chicago-based effort to um, uh, grow our technology companies. We've made one of our major priorities is to promote uh, diverse tech talent pipelines in our city. And we have a number of initiatives that are going on uh, here working with uh, whether it's Illinois Tech or it's University of Chicago or it's University of Illinois or UIUC, um, all the various uh, universities and training or including our community colleges. And, um, and we're being very intentional about really making sure that we've got a um, at scale diverse tech talent pipeline here in Chicago and in the greater uh, region. Um, because that's really what a lot of our um, companies want, but they're struggling to find diverse talent. Uh, as we talk about Chicago as this um, center where you're trying to attract a lot of tech talent, we should know that there are folks who are leaving Chicago, of course. Boeing, notably, is moving its headquarters to Virginia. Um, Ken Griffin of Citadel is is moving as well. Um, how do you sort of square that with the what you're trying to portray here as Chicago as an attractive place for people to come? Look, it's a disappointment for sure when we have some of our major uh, companies leave. Uh, but having said that, Site Selection Magazine said Chicago is the number one place, uh, a metro area for corporate relocations and expanding companies. And whether it's a Tegas, you know, it, uh, that uh, provides access to digital information when you're doing diligence and understanding issues, or it's uh, Discover Financial Services that's you know just committed to do a thousand new jobs here in Chicago. Um, there's a lot of companies that are choosing Chicago. And, and one of the reasons they're doing it is, as I, as I said, we've got a diverse talent pool. We have a very well-trained talent pool. We have probably the third largest number of tech jobs available, if you will, in the country. Um, and that's not only in startups, but it's also in established businesses. So, you know, we, I, the story can be tilted by one or two examples in either direction. But if you look at the overall picture, I think we're growing and developing. And that's something that we're celebrating this week with Tech Chicago. You know, just as you were talking about college a moment ago and growing the, the tech talent as you were ending on a moment ago there with that thought, particularly as it comes down to the cost of college, that has kind of skyrocketed against other expenses that people have seen, uh, perhaps the only comparable one being uh, home ownership and, and people who are trying to find a place to live. So all of that aside, what would you like to see the administration do formally on student loans, but also just the cost of college as well. And how is Chicago and the broader state of Illinois set in position to really attack that? Well, I, I think that, you know, uh, first of all, uh, as it relates to our city and our state, um, we have a real commitment to uh, making college available uh, whether one enters at community college or throughout the various uh, state systems all the way up to the University of Illinois or U University of Chicago or Northwestern. We have enormous scholarship funds made available as well. You're absolutely right though. College needs to be something that is attainable and achievable and training needs to be attainable and achievable to every single American. And that's a priority that we have in our region. Uh, that is, is um, because we know that that's the only way, you know, that's part of the process of accessing opportunity is having access to training and skills. So that's something I've been very focused on for, you know, decades. And um, affordability is a challenge that we continue to fight both in trying to make sure there's more scholarship, but also that how do you hold the cost down? And um, thanks for, for playing with us here on a lot of different topics. But finally, unfortunately, right now, when I think of Chicago, I'm also thinking of uh, the shooting, unfortunately, in Highland Park. And it's not alone, clearly. We have seen so many shootings happen. And as you talk to business leaders, I'm just curious if you think corporate America has been aggressive enough 
in funding um, gun control efforts from a business perspective about it being good for business to not have this kind of violence happening in the U.S.? Um, and if you think the money has been going to the right places? Well, I think, first of all, you know, the, the sad fact is shootings are up across the country, and that is really devastating, I think, to all of our citizenry across the country. And we need to do more, in my mind, this is me personally, I believe we all need to do more to address the underlying causes of shooting, whether it's extreme poverty, lack of opportunity, historic discrimination. Um, but then we also have to do more about access to guns. I do not see why any civilian in this country should have access to a military style weapon uh, or military style ammunition. Uh, it makes no sense to me. And um, uh, we need to change the laws. Illinois has strong gun laws, but frankly, there's no magnetometer at the border of our state. We've got states that were surrounding us. Uh, that have much uh, more lax gun laws, and we're, we, um, our citizenry is falling victim to that as much as anything else. So this is a uh, you know, very complex problem, but it, it, it requires much more serious focus. A complex problem that hopefully we see some common sense regulation and new reform around, especially here. Uh, great to have you here with us, and thanks for taking the time. P33 co-founder and chair and former U.S. Secretary of Commerce, Penny Pritzker, thanks so much for joining us.